And joining us now in the studio is Balpreet Singh. He is the spokesperson and legal counsel for the World Sick Organization of Canada. Mr. Singh, good to see you again, sir. Thank you, Madam. Uh, interesting when we mention how diverse the cabinet is. We talk about women. We talk about disabled. Uh, we didn't mention the turbans that are in cabinet. Uh, perhaps that's a measure of how established your community has now become. So we do see four sick members of cabinet, uh, which is up from two in the last cabinet. Uh, it's really a mark of how long we've been in Canada and how proud we are as Canadians and just how engaged we are. In fact, there are 17 uh, sick MPs that are currently sitting as uh, members of parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting. Uh, you had a little piece of trivia for me when we were in commercial, the third most common language now in the House of Commons. Absolutely. So Punjabi is the third most spoken uh, language in the House of Commons. It's spoken by, I believe, uh, 19 MPs. Uh, so that just follows after French. So we're showing the folks at home, we're showing them graphics right now of, of, of who these sick members are. Now, when you're part of a group that you identify with and, and, and members of your group become very visible in the public eye, I know you, everyone wishes them well. Has uh, Mr. Trudeau chosen well? Has he got good sick members? as cabinet ministers. So I'm familiar with uh, the members that have been chosen. Uh, I've had a chance to meet with three of the four, and they're really great people. Uh, they've done amazing things in their careers. For example, Harjit Sajjan, who's the Minister of Defense, has had trip, uh, tours of Bosnia, tours of Afghanistan, uh, very well re recognized and decorated. Uh, Navdeep Bain's also uh, done great things. Amarjeet Sohi, councillor in Edmonton. So uh, we are very proud of uh, the members that have been selected for cabinet. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on, on the debate? And it never ends. It's every time we pick a cabinet, you have to respect regional representation to some degree. You have to respect uh, gender equality now. I think that we, we've reached a watershed moment where we'll never go back now in terms of having a cabinet that's half women. And then you have all these other disparate groups which, which want to be represented and may not in fact be. And then you have the argument, let's just do it on merit. Where do you stand on that? So I think there's something to be said for a cabinet and a government that reflects Canada. Uh, to see myself and for other individuals to see their faces somehow reflected in those that are governing this country, uh, I think causes people to be more invested. Uh, so I think this effort to make a uh, cabinet look more like Canada is definitely worthwhile and I think having it 50% women uh, is a step that uh, will be recorded in history. This is a country that keeps being named the number one in the world for being accepting of other peoples, of other different looking people, accepting of different religions and the like. Uh, it's not necessarily an attitude that was reflected by the last government. Uh, did you feel in some way that the last government did not reflect your views of the world? Look, I've, I saw some tweets flying saying that uh, in the 1990s the question was, will sick soldiers or RCMP officers be able to wear the turban uh, on duty? And today we have a Minister of Defense who's wearing a turban. So I think the progress that we've seen as a sick community, uh, and just as Canada as a whole, is amazing. There are still some major obstacles, some major attitude changes that we uh, still need to see. Uh, for example, the Quebec Charter of Values was something that uh, was of great concern. But I think the Canada that I see moving, in the for moving forward is definitely one that's more diverse and more inclusive.